entered into competition in their native Ireland, Careys began appearing in English show rings by the 1920s and were admitted to AKC registration in 1922. Carry blue should be upstanding, well knit, and in good balance. He appears to be approximately square with a strong, closely coupled body, well developed, and muscular. He has a definite terrier style and character which suggests independence and self assurance. He is never racy, nor should he appear coarse or heavy. Moderation is the key to your evaluation of the Kerry Blue. The ideal Kerry male should stand 18 and a half inches at the withers, with 18 to 19 and a half inches the preferred range. The ideal bitch will be slightly smaller than the male, ideally between 17 and a half and 19 inches at the withers. Only when the comparative superiority of an exhibit outside of these ranges clearly justifies it should greater latitude be taken. It should not extend to a dog over 20 inches or under 17 and a half inches or to a bitch over 19 and a half inches or under 17 inches. The minimum limits do not apply to puppies. Dogs will weigh from 33 to 40 pounds, with bitches weighing proportionately less. Let's begin our detailed examiner with the head. It is in good proportion to the rest of the body and is long, but not exaggerated. It should be well balanced with the skull and foreface in parallel planes. Seen in profile, the skull is flat with a very slight stop. The foreface is full and well made up so that it does not fall away appreciably below the eyes. There is, however, some moderate chiseling, avoiding a wedgy appearance. Seen from the front, the skull is flat and of but moderate breadth between the ears and narrows very slightly to the eyes. Cheeks should be clean, level, and free from bumpiness. The carry should have a keen terrier expression. In evaluating the head, it is important to check the muzzle for the correct length and fullness and the skull for its proper planes. What about this dog's head? The cheeks do not have the desired clean, level appearance. This head is correct. The skull is flat with a very slight stop. The skull and foreface are of about equal length with their top lines in parallel planes. The skull is flat and of but moderate breadth between the ears and narrows slightly to the eyes. The cheeks are clean and level. The carry's nose is black with nostrils large and wide. Teeth should be strong and white, meeting in either a scissors or a level bite. An undershot mouth should be strictly penalized. Eyes are dark, 
small, and should not be prominent. They are well placed with a keen terrier expression. Any suggestion of a yellow eye is very undesirable. These eyes are lighter than desired. Ears are V-shaped, small, but still in proportion to the size of the dog. They are set so that the top of the folded ear is slightly above the level of the skull. The leather is of moderate thickness. The ears are carried forward, close to the cheeks. These ears are too large and are not folded high enough, losing the typical terrier expression. Here is a typical carry head, exhibiting proper construction with well-placed dark eyes and properly set and carried V-shaped ears. Now let's consider the Kerry Blue Terrier's neck and body. The neck is clean and moderately long, gradually widening to the shoulders. It should be well set on the shoulders and carried proudly. The shoulders themselves are fine, long, and sloping. They're well laid back with sufficient length of upper arm. This allows for freedom of movement. Forelegs are straight, with pastern short, straight, and hardly noticeable. Here, the shoulders appear too upright. This will inhibit front reach. The forelegs should appear straight when seen from the front. The elbows are perpendicular to the body, allowing them to work clear of the body during movement. The chest is deep and of moderate breadth. The front feet are strong, compact, fairly round, and moderately small. They should point straight ahead. Pads should be of good depth and free from cracks. Toes are arched with black nails. The carry's body is characterized by a short, strong back with a level top line. There should be no slackness. Ribs are fairly well sprung and are deep rather than round. There is a slight tuck up. Loins are short and powerful. This dog's top line is incorrect. There's a dip behind the withers and a roach over the loin. This dog is too long in appearance. Remember, the carry's appearance is approximately square. This short, strong, straight back is correct. The carry is short coupled, requiring short, powerful loins. The tail is set on high and is of moderate length. It is carried gaily erect. The straighter the tail, the better. Hindquarters are strong, muscular, and free from droop or crouch. Stifles are well bent and turned neither in nor out. Hocks are well let down and are perpendicular to the ground when standing. Correct angulation will preserve the balanced appearance of the dog and allow for full freedom of action when moving. Seen from the rear, the powerful muscling of the hindquarters should be evident. Hocks are upright and parallel to each other, turning neither in nor out. Rear feet, like the front feet, are strong, compact, fairly round, and moderately small. They should turn neither in nor out. Note that dew claws must be removed. Dew claws on the hind legs are a disqualification. Now let's discuss the Kerry Blue Terrier's coat. It is soft, dense, and wavy. 
Typical show trim should leave the body well covered but tidy. With the ears, cheeks, and head clear, except for whiskers. This coat lacks waves. Keep in mind that a harsh, wiry, or bristle coat should be severely penalized, as should a woolly or cottony coat. As for color, the mature carry color is any shade of blue-gray or gray-blue, and can range from deep slate to light blue-gray. The color should be uniform throughout, except that distinctly darker, even black parts may appear on the muzzle, head, ears, tail, and feet. Carries are typically black at birth, with the color clearing to the correct shade as the puppy matures. They will pass through one or more transitions involving very dark blue shades or tinges of brown, and mixtures of these together with a progressive infiltration of the correct mature color. Consequently, coat color in animals up to 18 months of age carries no preference. After 18 months, however, any deviation to a significant extent from the mature color described in the standard is to be severely penalized. Note that a solid black coat color in a mature dog is a disqualification. The carry's movement should be characterized by both forelegs and hind legs moving straight forward. With good reach in front and drive from behind. The top line should remain level. Proper movement is best evaluated at a moderate trot. Coming toward you, the forelegs are carried straight forward, turning neither in nor out. As speed increases, there will be some convergence toward the center line of travel. And going away, the hind legs should follow in a straight line behind the forelegs. Again with some convergence at faster speeds. This hind movement is too wide. This dog's excessive rear angulation results in sloppy movement. This dog is not reaching out in front. Here again is correct movement. Straight, active, exhibiting full freedom of action. with no wasted motion. Finally, a word about temperament. The Cary Blue Terrier is alert, friendly, but ready to stand his ground if challenged. Carries are active dogs and take a lively interest in the world around them. Always willing to take on whatever task is at hand. The carry makes an ideal companion at work or at play.